ideas, ideas. I'm always interested in interesting ideas. So let's see what ideas that good logic has to put forth. So if you're a government employee, you don't need to have a union to fight against anyone because the government's supposed to be looking out for you. And I'm going to come back. We're going to put a pin on this for a second, put it over on the side, and I'm going to come back to that for a second. But that's an interesting idea. If you're a government employee, you don't need a union. The government is supposed to be looking out for you. Hmm. Well, as you may or may not know, I always take issue with the idea of things supposed to or supposed to not do other things. But how is the government supposed to look out for you if you're a government employee? Does your private employer have to look out for you if you are a private employee? I'm confused about this. How does this work? Now, in this rant, good logic is going on because he believes that government unions serve no function whatsoever, or at least not a good one. And I have to disagree with this notion because unions, like anything else, can do beneficial things and they can do harmful things. Of course, once a union stops representing its members and starts representing the paychecks that they get from the corporations or someone else, yes, unions totally become a horrible thing. Possibly. But I'll get back to that, and just like good logic puts things to the side. After all, dear frenemy, what exists everywhere you see? Ah, nepotism. That alone creates problems with this idea. Nepotism, that horrible, horrible thing that we all have to deal with. Hey, I know somebody that would be perfect for this job. As you may or may not know, I am a former military member myself, and I do know people that work in or have worked in different government agencies. And I can tell you that just like in the private sector, you have to deal with a lot of bullshit in a government job. Now, it's a little bit different with a work a government job because in addition to having a boss and a boss's boss and so forth and so on, you have a bunch of people that determine whether or not you should be there with their votes. Now, I'm not saying one way or another, but let's just put forth this little scenario. Let's say you are a teacher, because again, this rant from Good Logic is about teachers' unions. Let's say you are a teacher and you happen to be a good teacher. Oh, but what does good mean? It's objective. But let's just go with the idea that you are a good teacher. You are a good teacher because you teach students to be well prepared for the future. However, there's a problem. Many of your students don't like you, despite the fact that you put them through the rigor that they would need to understand and navigate through real life. And let's say that you're teaching in a town that has a lot of whiny, entitled parents. And these whiny, entitled parents decide to get together and go to the PTA meetings and to this council and the school board and so forth because they don't like you. So you see right there, the government supposed to protect you kind of goes out the window. I do know one person who, while working as a government agency, has many people there that do not like him simply because he likes to go off and do his own things on his free time. And many people look for the slightest, slightest error, the slightest, slightest miscalculation. Because, let's face it, we're all human and we all make mistakes. But any such thing to be justification for firing this person and the only thing that helps him retain his job is the union. 
So in the end, it's a double-edged sword. I know people who are teachers and do not want to go back into the classrooms for various reasons, some because they just want to be lazy and some because they are uh, genuinely scared. But then later on in the video, good logic comes to another, he comes back to this point, I'll say. So let's come back to the thing he pinned on the side. And here's what I'm going to come back to. Remember that thing I put a pin on before? I was talking about them negotiating against government. The only reason to say that they need to have power negotiating gov against government is if you believe government is evil. If you think government is really bad, which I understand a lot of us feel that government is evil, but I mean, if you think they're dangerously bad, like they're really dangerously bad, and you believe that teachers unions should exist, you know what else you must believe in? You must believe in the Second Amendment to the fullest extent possible. That is an interesting idea, and in some ways I do have to agree, because the overall principle is someone having a tool with, with, with which to defend themselves. However, I do have to disagree about the idea of government being evil, because as I've said before, government is just a tool. And this is probably not the most flattering picture for him, but I'm sure he'll be able to live with it if he ever sees this video. But anyways, government is just a tool. And who wields the tool? People. People of various sorts. Right now, in our current situation and throughout most of history, it has been the few that wield this tool with their cronies, usually picked through nepotism. And the few wield this tool to oppress the rest of us, and so forth and so forth. Blah, blah, blah. You've heard it all before. But even if it wasn't those particular people, who were we to say that any other people would be better? So no, governments are not evil. But yes, people, people are very evil. We are all very evil. And that is the point. That is why I make all these videos, dear frenemy. However, to simply say that if you believe in teachers' unions, you believe in a Second Amendment to the fullest extent is not something I can get behind. I have to say that there is a bit of a non sequitur there, primarily because such a statement lacks something very important. Important. Yes, I can speak. Anyways, the important thing that, that such a statement lacks is nuance. And after all, dear frenemies, we all live and die by nuance. 